Hi everybody, Mr Thompson here. What we're going to look at today is finding some equivalent fractions and we're going to do all of this with pictures. Now before we start we have to know what equivalent means. So equivalent means it's two things that are the same but not necessarily using the same numbers. Okay, and that will become more obvious as we go through. So the first thing that I would usually ask is I would say draw a half and most people would draw themselves a circle and they'd split it in half and they'd relate it to a pizza or a pie or something like that. Now, I don't want to see any circles today whatsoever. What we're going to be dealing with is little squares. Um, I do want to see lots of pictures but I don't want to see circles. So if I asked you now to draw a half but you've got to use little squares, I would hope that most of you would end up with perhaps two squares together and then you would shade one out of them because this is what we're doing when we're shading fractions we're literally saying shade one out of two so in this case with a half you need two squares and you need to shade one out of two because that's what our fraction means having a look at another one perhaps a third what I would expect you to draw would be, you got it, three squares, draw them right here, and we're going to shade one out of three. Okay, let's look at a couple more. The last two I want to look at are just one quarter and three quarters. So let's take one quarter first. Exactly the same as before, I'm going to need one out of four. So first things first, I'm going to need four squares. So I draw my four squares and then just shade one of them. For three quarters, it's ever so slightly different, but it's the same process. I want us to start reading fractions as this is three out of four. So the first thing we've got to do is draw our four squares. The next part, shade three of them. Now a couple of you are going to look at that and going to say, but you didn't shade, shade the first three. Does it matter? No. So long as we've got a group of four and we've shaded three of them, we have shaded fractions correctly. We've definitely got three out of four. So the next thing I'd ask you to look at would be, what are the other fractions, other ways that we could draw a half? And I'd leave you to have a play with that. Now, we've definitely already got one out of two. But is there any other way to shade a half? What if perhaps we had even more squares? Imagine if you want a big chocolate bar. If it was a big chocolate bar and it was split into lots of pieces, could you still have a half of it? I'm sure you could. So let's, rather than having loads more, let's just add one more row. So now we've got another two squares, and I'm pretty sure I can still shade one out of our new two. And we've still got a half. I could keep doing this. So here I've got another row, and now I've got another one shaded out of the new two squares. All together though, I've got three out of six. Let's keep going. Here I've got four out of eight. I've just added one more row, and again, just shaded one out of the two. And I've got four out of eight. Let's do one more just to finish up. So it's another two squares, and I'm just gonna shade one more. So hopefully you would agree, we've got a nice big chocolate bar now, or a big picture now, with lots of squares, and we've definitely got a half of it shaded. Looking at it right from the top, if we just took the top two, we'd have one shaded out of two. So that would be one half. When we added another row, we've now got two out of four. One more row, three out of six. Another one, four out of eight. And finally, five out of ten. And these are all equivalent fractions. They're all the same as one half. Just slightly bigger numbers. Perhaps you can spot a pattern.
Let's carry on and just look at another fraction. So a slightly different fraction. This one is 2 thirds. Now again, if I wanted to find equivalent fractions to 2 thirds, I'd start by just drawing 2 thirds. Absolutely no pizza boxes in sight. We're going to go straight in with just with squares. So here we've got two shaded out of three. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to keep adding rows and writing down what it is each time. So my next row, I need another three and I need to shade another two out of three. All together, I've now shaded four out of six. I'm going to keep going. So there we are, I've, I've finished drawing some rows and let's look at what the fractions were. So first off, I just had two out of three. When I added another row, I then had four out of six. One more row, six out of nine. Then eight out of twelve. And finally, all together, ten out of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And there they are. Each one of these fractions are exactly the same as 2 thirds, just with different numbers. This is what equivalent fractions are. They're the same as 2 thirds, but just with different numbers. Can you see a pattern? Here's one for you to have a go at. Press pause on the video and see if you can find five equivalent fractions to five six. Here are the pictures I drew. First off I started with six squares and I shaded five of them, giving me five out of six. And then I just kept adding rows. So with an extra row I then had 10 out of 12, and then 15 out of 18, 20 out of 24, and 25 out of 30. And obviously we could keep going in this way and keep adding more and more rows to find more and more equivalent fractions. I wonder if you spotted how we could do it without pictures. Let's take a look at 5 6. Let's look just at the numerator, the number on top. 5 changes to 10, then 15, 20 and 25. Did you spot it? It's the 5 times table. This is because each time we add a new row, we're adding another five that are shaded. So each time we're adding five more. So our numbers go up in fives on the top. And similarly, the denominator, the bottom row, each time we add an extra six squares. Each time we add another row. So each time we're adding an extra six. So our denominator is going to go up in sixes. 6, 12, 18, 24, 30. And this is how we can find equivalent fractions. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.